Rev up your engines. Today I'm going to talk about VTEC engines, how they can get more power and better gas mileage out of the same engine. Now variable valve timing engines are an interesting phenomena that's been around for quite some time and Honda was really the first company that perfected them. Granted the first mass produced variable valve timing system was in 1980 with the Italian company Alfa Romeo, but if you know Italian cars, hey, <laughs> they didn't hold up that well over time and the engine wasn't that reliable. But in 1989, Honda made the Honda Integra, wasn't sold in the United States, it was called an Acura here, but it was the first VTEC engine that Honda made and it proved to be extremely reliable. Now here's my cute little model that shows how valve timing works. This is the cam. As it spins around, the lobes open and close the valves, letting the air and fuel come in to fill the cylinder, and then once it fires, letting the exhaust gas come out of the engine. And in older cars, the camshaft here was connected to the crankshaft by a gear which was not adjustable, it only worked one way. So the cam timing was non adjustable, except for race cars. As you can see here, this is a race rocket for a camshaft and you can loosen these bolts and then you could set the timing by the degree wheel on the top to advance or retard it. Now you do this to get more power out of an engine. Of course it would get worse gas mods, but racing guys don't care, they want power. But as I said in 1989, Honda came up with a brilliant idea. They had an engine that by itself could change the valve timing and the valve lift automatically by itself as you drove. And in a Honda system, not only could it change the timing of the cam to advance or retard it, it can also change the lift so it would open wider to get more power, but open smaller to get better gas mileage. In Honda, the VTEC stands for Variable Valve Timing and Electronic Control. Through electronic computer control and hydraulic control using the oil pressure of the engine, not only can the Honda system advance or retard when the valves open and close, but it can also make them open wider for high RPM power and open less wider so they get better gas mods when you don't need all that power. And in 1996, Toyota came up with their version which they call VVTi, which is a similar system of course for patent reasons they couldn't copy them exactly, but it's the same basic principle. Electronics and the hydraulic fluid of your oil pressure allows the valve timing to be changed by computer. Now both the Honda system and the Toyota system have proven to be extremely reliable, but there are some companies out there that have extremely unreliable variable valve systems as they age. For example, I've worked on a lot of Mazdas with their variable valve systems that broke even before the engines had 100,000 miles on them. The ones that I saw problems with the Mazdas, they were using a motorcraft actuator on the front of the cam and those actuators break down all the time on the Mazdas. And it's an expensive repair taking the engine apart and changing all those parts, plus if they do break under high rough situations, you can bend valves in the engine, then you pretty much say goodbye to the engine because everything inside gets bent. So when it comes time to buying a car that has a variable valve time in engine, there's two things you have to understand. The first thing is you want to go with a company that makes quality engines that hold up over time. Do a little research before you plunk down 30, 40,000 or more for a car that has a variable valve time in engine with a history of problems. And number two is change your oil and use the correct oil for VVT valve engines. That's very important. Being electro, Hydraulically operated, they use oil pressure to run themselves. There's lots of tiny little holes the oil has to flow through. You got to use the right weight oil. If yours says you are zero W20 oil, use that. Don't put a heavier oil in. And to be honest, a lot of the VVT failures I see don't have to do with the engine themselves, they have to do with the owner of the car. Because a large amount of the VVT engine failures I see are due to contaminated dirty oil. The oil just wasn't changed enough, then it destroys these systems. So if you pick the right engine with the right manufacturer and change your oil frequently, you can have a great time with the VVT valve engines. But make sure you do both of those things. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.